Hi everybody, I'm Ashley and I wanted to spend a couple minutes today talking about my fourth grade math units. Now these units have been written to be used in math workshop or in guided math. Whichever approach you use to teaching math will work perfectly with these units. And the first thing I wanted you to see was the year at a glance and the pacing of the units. Now, I wanted to share that you can teach these out of order. I do highly encourage multiplication and division to be taught back to back, as well as connecting your fraction and your decimal units, just because those two subjects are so interrelated in our math unit. But we're gonna go through now our math units or the math bundle, the contents of this bundle, to let you see how I use it and how it could be used in your classroom. So each unit comes with an at-a-glance page, and this simply lays out the overall plan of the unit. Now these units are aligned to both the Common Core Standards and Texas Standards. That It's been accommodated to be, meet both standards, and if additional printables are required, then I have included those. Now these lessons are all very conceptual lessons. This is not a lot of process oriented teaching. This is instruction where students construct their own ideas and their own understanding through hands-on practice, through problem solving, through investigating. My absolute favorite resource is anything written by Van de Waal. I've read all of his books numerous times. I go to them again and again and again because this is the best resource in finding math instruction for students. For every lesson in the bundle, there is a detailed lesson plan. Now, there are over 140 lessons, so we have a lot of lesson plans here. Now, I've included the standard for each lesson as well as the materials needed, and I tried to keep the materials to a minimum, but we are going to need to use some for conceptual math instruction. And then I've added a mini lesson. The mini lesson is what you would teach to the whole group. Even if you were teaching through a guided math, you're still going to want to introduce topics to your students. This might be where they take out their dry erase board and do a few problems together. Or you might read a picture book about math. But this is short. This is five to ten minutes, just quick skill review. I'm going over your morning work just very fast for your mini lesson. And then your work time. Now your work time is when it's going to be flexible. Your work time could be independent work. Your work time could be with partners. Your work time could be in different math rotations. I'm videoing, buddy. So, but you could work this out through centers, through stations. You could have partner work, group work. This time is entirely up to you. What I have included is a conceptual task to engage students, to allow them to construct knowledge, to construct understanding. How you implement it is up to you, and I've given suggestions within the unit and how to do this. And then your closing is when you bring your students back together. This is often the skipped part of math workshop and guided math, but this is when we revisit what did we learn today. And this is a great time to allow students to talk about math as well as to address their misconceptions. Now in the units, you're going to also find an intervention ideas. What can you do for your students who are struggling with this topic? And it gives ideas, sometimes I've included extra principles to be used for those interventions, as well as extension ideas. What should we do for our students above grade level? And of course, I've also included essential questions that can be asked during the lesson, as well as formative assessment ideas. Now, each of the lessons comes with a practice page. Whether or not you use the practice page completely depends upon you. I do not try to use them all. Now, you could add these as part of one of your math rotations. You could use them as a mini lesson where you complete it together. You could use it as an exit ticket. You could use it for what you do in your guided math group. It's completely up to you. It's flexible. These practice pages are your more 
basic assignments. These are more skill-based, task-oriented. There's not a lot of critical thinking and not a lot of difficult problem solving, but these are just there to supplement as needed. You could even use them for homework if you were looking for homework ideas. But every lesson does come with one, and it's indicated in the table of contents as well as the unit at a glance on what practice page goes with which lesson. So any printable needed for a lesson is also included. For example, you can see I have students create a multiples booklet while we're studying multiples. Or we might have a division with remainders flipbook where students have to decide how to interpret remainders. But any printable that's used to assist students in their learning will be included in the unit so you don't have to go purchase something separately. It's just all in one spot. So we've seen that the math bundle includes lesson plans, it includes printables, it includes skill practice pages. But by far, in my opinion, the best part of this bundle are, is the math task. These math tests were very challenging to write because I did not want a glorified skills practice page. I didn't want something where students could just apply a formula and be able to solve the problem. I wanted students to have to construct understanding. I also wanted students to be required to represent their math with different representations. I wanted to add a lot of constructed response, a lot of writing about math. I wanted a lots of critical thinking, very problem solving, project based tasks. So these tasks are the heart of this unit. You can see on the example below, we do incorporate um, hands-on learning. There's lots of um, activities that integrate different modes of learning for students of all different backgrounds. These will be challenging tasks. A lot of times I have what we call in my room struggle time, which is when the brain grows and it's when it learns because I don't want to give an assignment that my students look at and instantly know the answer to because there's no growth there. The whole purpose of these tasks is to require students to apply what they've learned in a problem solving context. I want my students to have to stop and to think and to problem solve and that's what these tasks lend themselves to. So if you're using this in a guided math approach, I want you to be careful of how you plan your timing just because some of the tasks do take longer than others. Um, if it inquire, requires a lot of critical thinking, you may want to block off more than one day for that task or maybe make that task count as two rotations rather than one. It's all very flexible and if you ever have any questions about a particular task, let me know because this is what I use every day myself. Now each of these tasks can be differentiated for all different levels of learning. We all know that students love learning through games, so I was definitely sure to include lots of practice games that students have fun with. Um, there's, you know, division bump. I tried to make my games as low prep as possible because we all know how busy teachers are during the year. And I didn't want to spend hours upon hours cutting out thousands of pieces. So I did try to keep the games fairly teacher friendly, quick to make lots of spinner games, lots of dice games. But I think these games can be added to rotations, they can be added to stations, they can be added to centers, you know, whatever we want to call it, however we want to teach it, they are there to use at your discretion. But once again, each lesson is clearly marked with which game goes with which lesson. Now I included the math rubrics that I used throughout the year last year. This was a game changer for me and I know that they look very basic and very simple but I cannot tell you what an impact they had on my instruction. So I've made up fake names because obviously I'm not going to use my students' real names. So what I would do is when I teach a lesson, every student gets placed on what they would have scored on that lesson. Now these are typically formative assessments. As I am teaching a unit, I'm not going to take a summative grade on that until students have had multiple opportunities to practice that standard. So for example, let's just pretend here, say I only had five kids in my class. Maybe David scored a level four. Now he, on the rubric, you can see where the level four is shown on that rubric. Now you can either use 
the one where the um, levels are already indicated or without, whichever is fine. Um, so I might write David's name under level four because that's what he scored. And then maybe Abby and Brandon and Kate got a level three. So anyway, I would write their name down. So when I am meeting with students on the day of that assignment or the day following that, I can quickly look and say, yikes, I need to pull back Aaron in a small group and we'll work together. What this does though is it makes me easily able to tell what students I need to work with which day, but it also is a great visual of the class's progress because when you have 25 names on this, it's really exciting to see the shift of names moving to those to that level four. And then it also is great for me because if I see someone consistently in the level one or the level two, that's when I know, hey, we need to be getting on our RTI paperwork. Um, I do use one of these for every standard. This is an amazing tool for standards-based grading. Um, I tend to use this almost daily. Um, now, I've also added student graphs. So students can graph their assessments. This would be for their summative assessments. I would definitely not recommend or try to have students graph every formative assessment because those assessments should be built into your instruction. and They're so informal. It would almost be overwhelming to students. But I definitely think it's feasible to have students graph their summative assessments. So I've given added different graphs, one for every domain, that students can just track their own progress. So this is my fourth grade math bundle at a glance. If I have left out any information, please don't hesitate to contact me. I am happy to help you out, share with you different ideas and different strategies. And um, I hope this was helpful and I hope that you have a great rest of your summer.